Matt, yeah. take us through the creation of Enhanced Football. Um, yeah. Where, how did it all come about? Yeah, so I've been doing it for probably a, like a long time without the official sort of branding and things like that. So um, just been on a helping out some young kids on the Sunshine Coast for probably, you know, seven or eight years. Just And it hasn't been a big program, but just some individual kids um, sporadically throughout the years. And then like many businesses um, through, through the times of COVID, um, when I was at home teaching online, um, I just thought, you know, I was a lot of people coming to me saying there's, there's actually not a huge amount of AFL resources on YouTube, online. Um, and, I, and, and that's when the, the idea clicked. And I just thought I'm really going to try to share as much of, as my teaching knowledge, my football knowledge from, from when I was young to now. I want to just share as much as I can. And I think that's why we've grown um, pretty quickly is because I'm, I'm really willing to share. I'm not, I'm not holding anything back. I, I just want to make um, coaches' lives easier. I want to help kids. I want to help senior footballers. And what were some key pillars that you were focusing on? Uh, for the developing footballers that are listening in, uh, yep. what are some you know professional athletes? What are, what were what were the key areas of focus in regards to kicking? For kicking, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I suppose the, the the main one that um that I was trying to introduce that like kicking on the run has got to be the most important thing, right? So when you when you're kicking on the run, we've got to give ourselves a bit of room. So I call it the pushing phase. So we've got to actually push the ball out, and you look at the best kicks in the comp. Your Bonson Pallies, your Daniel Rich, your Pendlebury's, um, all those type of blokes. All the photos I put up on Instagram, just have a look at how they actually get the ball and they push the ball out with nice relaxed arms. A lot of coaches, particularly in the female programs, um, you know, they're, they're, where they're so obsessed with, with a low ball drop that they actually turn them into robots and their arms don't move. So we want them to be a little bit more relaxed, push the ball out to allow all the body segments to come through fluently. Um, so that was one of the main ones, you know, just getting them more fluent on the run. What are some actionable tips that you found useful to um, yeah, help, like you said, keep the, the best, best kickers still engaged and, and getting yep. something out of it? Uh, the ones that maybe are lacking confidence or new to the sport mm. um, and aren't as skilled. Uh, mm. making sure they've, they've got a focus area and then the middle tier as well. So, that, yeah, like you said, there's three different tiers. Yeah, yeah how, do, how do you tackle that? <laughs> yeah, and it's one that at a club level, which there might be coaches listening, that is hard. Like you don't want to always just group your top six players together because um, that can cause a, some issues with culture and, um, and confidence and things like that around the club. So, um, and it's also important to note that, you know, it's important that the better players are mixed in with your... Um, you know, your middles or your lesser end players because they're going to learn by watching and feeling and seeing what they're doing um, as well. So I just think you've got to mix it up. You've got to give the top end players a chance to mix with each other. Recently posted today at 2,000 followers on YouTube, which is yeah. uh, awesome and, and strong Instagram following as well. Mm. So do you, how much structure is there? Like, do you have your, do you have like a schedule that you up you know, with with themes based? Is it more fluid? Talk us through your sort of processes. Yeah, yeah, no real structure. We just try to be really consistent on Instagram. That that's been our. Um, we were really focused on YouTube early, um, so that that sort of gathered a fair bit of momentum. And then probably in the last twelve months, um, Instagram has been our major focus. And um, a lot of the feedback we get is that it's people like it because it's it's continual, it's constant. Um, it's always there and there's always helpful things. So it, as you know, it does take time. Um, I still do it all myself at the moment because <clears throat> I find it's such specific information that I'm trying to educate people that I, you know, potentially could get others to help, but I want it to be, yeah, really meaningful and valuable for, for our followers. And that's sort of the feedback we're getting. So which movie or TV series has uh, made the biggest impact on you Ooh. and why? Well, one, and I'll just mention one that I, it hasn't had a huge impact, but one that I, I'm not into car racing at all. I find it really boring. Um, but yeah. I've just started watching the F1 series on Netflix. Um, right. and, and I think there's been about four seasons. So I'm back. It's about 2017 and 18 at the moment. Um, but it's fantastic. Like I'm into it now. Like looking at Daniel Ricciardo's journey from Red Bull changing teams. Um, and it just gives you a really good insight into a different sport completely um, and the money involved um, 
It's phenomenal. Yeah, I'd, I'd recommend that one. Um, but yeah, yep. I, I do like your documentaries, you know, anything about your Michael Jordan's, Kobe Bryant's, I get sucked into pretty quick. 